Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Python series. In this video, I'll be teaching about Booleans. Okay guys, welcome back. In the last episode, we learned about lists, which are another Python data type for essentially having a list of items, so multiple values uh, into one variable. In this video, I'll be teaching you about Booleans, which in Python are also known as bools. All right, so Booleans are really cool. Um, they only have two value options. So a Boolean can either be true or false. That's literally it, it can't be anything else. An integer can be any number pretty much, generally speaking but a Boolean can only be a true or false, all right? So if we wanna make a variable that stores a Boolean, you can simply do is cheesecake good, and you can give that variable a value of true or false, and of course cheesecake is very good, so we're gonna do true. There we go, and make sure that you have your Boolean value starts with a capital letter rather than a lowercase letter. In some other languages, such as Java or C++, um, it's going to be all lowercase, but for Python specifically, it's going to be uppercase for the first letter. All right, so we can do something that stores false. So is coffee good? And that's, of course, false. Everyone knows that. All right, so that's really just as simple as it is. Uh, Booleans are true or false. And it gets more complex, though, when you start to combine Boolean expressions and Booleans in general. And as always, we can print this out if we want to. So do print is cheesecake good, and then print is coffee good, and let's see what that gives us. So let's go ahead and right click this, run it, and we get true and false. That's what it looks like printed out. Okay, cool. And of course, this on its own is not very complex, you know, just having true or false as values. I mean, it does get you somewhere, but where it really gets nice is when you can combine Booleans into what's called Boolean expressions or do something called Boolean logic, which is a way of giving you new Booleans from existing Booleans. So it's Boolean arithmetic. So just like you do arithmetic on numbers, like adding and subtracting and uh, comparison, like, you know, uh, greater than or equal than and all that stuff, um, you can do the same thing with Booleans, even though they're not numbers exactly. I mean, behind the scenes, a true is equal to one and false is equal to zero. I'll show that later. Um, but still, there are specific Boolean operators and they work in a really cool way. And then you can combine them together and you get some really, really cool stuff. So we're gonna dive into that, especially as we learn about if statements and stuff like that in the next episode. But anyway, so what I'm gonna show you now are the Boolean logical operators. So the fundamental Boolean logical operators include and, or, not, uh, exclusive or, or XOR, and yeah, that's it right there. So these are all pretty simple, don't sweat it. So first we have and. So and is true if both operands are true, okay? And the operands in this case are gonna be Boolean values, like I said, because Boolean logical operators are not with numbers, they're with Booleans. So the operands are the Booleans themselves on either side of the operator, which are these things here, okay? So let's try this out. So we can go ahead and do, let's just print it out. So inside of here, we're gonna do a Boolean logical expression. So we're going to do true and false. And there you go, that's your first Boolean logical expression. So you're doing, you have two Booleans here, that these are the operands as Boolean literal values, uh, meaning that they're not stored into variables or anything like that. And then you are doing a logical operation on them, a Boolean logical operation on them by putting and in between. So this will return and print out true if these are both true, but in this case, only one of them are true, so it's false. So if we run this, we get false at the bottom. There we go. So if we change this to true, we get true, right? Because they're both true now. Makes sense, right? If we change this one to false, then it's false again. And then if we change this one to false, now they're both false, so it's definitely not gonna be true. There we go, okay? So that's and, now let me show you or. And I'll show you a chart when I'm done going over uh, all four of these, so, so stay tuned for that. So or is true, when at least one of the Booleans is true. So in the first case, and, both of them had to be true. In this case for or, either one has to be true, or even both of them can be true and then it'll be true. So let me show you, so print true or false. What will that give you? That'll give you true according to what I said. So print this out and you get true because one of them is true. 
And if we want to do both of them, uh, it says at least, right? That's the keyword at least. So now it's still going to be true. There you go. And then false, false. And now it's going to be false because now both of them are no longer true when at least one of them needs to be true for this entire expression to evaluate to true or false. All right. So as you can see, this is pretty cool, right? This is essentially combining individual Booleans uh, into one expression and then doing math upon them, Boolean math on them to give you another Boolean. So it's a way of combining Booleans together using operations and operators and arithmetic and whatever. So pretty cool stuff. Let's keep going. So the next one is going to be, let's skip not for now and then we'll do XOR. So XOR is called exclusive OR. So let's get rid of this. Exclusive OR, otherwise known as XOR. That's why it's an X, exclusive. So this one works very similarly, but you got to pay attention to the language while I'm typing this. So uh, is true when exactly one of the booleans is true, okay? So keyword exactly. In the first case with the regular OR operator, well, um, only one of them had to be true for the entire thing to be true, right? But with exclusive OR, only exactly one of them has to be true for the entire thing to be true. So let me show you what I mean in practice. So we can do true, and then for XOR, you don't type XOR, you do this little pointy thing on your keyboard, which is on the six key, so shift six. So true, pointy thing, and then false. This will evaluate to true because one of them, exactly one of them is true. And then this one, false, pointy thing, <laughs> and then true. This one will also be true because exactly one of them is uh, true. And then print true, pointy thing, and then true. This one will be false because both of them are true when only one of them needs to be has to be true. So print false and false. So this one will, of course, be very, very false because none of them are true. So uh, let's just get rid of this, comment this out, boom. And now let's see what the four value are, values are when we print this out. We get true, true, false, false, which makes perfect sense, awesome. And the last one I wanna teach you about, the last Boolean logical operator is the not operator. And this one's a little different. It's not really something you do on two different Booleans, it's something you do on a single Boolean. So not flips the Boolean, all right? So let me show you, so print, and then you do not, and then true. So what this will do, this will evaluate or be essentially translated into false. It's just the opposite of true. And then this one will be not false, so this one will be translated into true. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So there we go, false and then true. So it just flips it over to the other side, join the doc side. Okay, so those are the main four Boolean logical operators within Python. So let me show you a quick chart real quick that I like. So here we go. Um, this is just a chart that you'll commonly see when learning about stuff like this. So you have, uh, you have a Boolean in this row and then a Boolean in this row. So A and B are two different Booleans and they have different values on each column, or excuse me, these are columns and then these are rows, you get the point. And then here are the different Boolean logical operators being applied to A and B. All right, so let's just go over each one. So A here has the value of false, B here has the value of false. So A, and then this symbol here means or, okay? So in Python, you literally just type or, but in this case, uh, sometimes it'll be represented as just that, that um, whatever that's called, <laughs> okay? So A or B. Now for or, again, one of them has to be true and they're both false, so this will be false, okay? So then we have true, false, that'll be true because one of them is true. False, true, one of them is true, so that'll be true. And then true, true, one of them, at least one of them is true, so it'll be true, all right? So the next one, this one's a little more self-explanatory. So you have the and and then ampersand b. So that's gonna be the and operator instead of just typing out and. So both of them have to be true for it to be true. So both of them are false, so it's false. One of them is true, so it's false. One of them is true again, so it's false. And then both of them are true, so it's true. Okay, hopefully you're following along. Um, if you just need to stare at this for a bit, that's okay. It can be a little confusing if it's your first time, but don't worry. So next time, our next, next operator is gonna be the XOR one that we saw in Python. So XOR is exclusive OR. So for exclu exclusive OR, again, one of them, exactly one of them has to be true for the whole thing to be true, okay? So in this case, they're both false, so it's false. In this case, exactly one of them is true, so it's true. And then again, exactly one of them is true, except on the right side now, so it's true. And then both of them are true now, so it's false, because exactly one of them has to be true. 
And then finally, we have not. So that's what that means. Uh, anytime you have an exclamation point before some sort of value, that's going to be flipping it usually or negating it is another way you could say that if you're a professional. I'm just kidding. So anyway, um, so not and. So this is just applying to and, right? Not both of them. So not and, so false, then it's true, true, then it's false, false, then it's true, and then true, and then it's false. So it's just flipping each of them, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. And there you go. Those are the different Boolean logical operators within Python that I wanted to teach you about. Um, this is very, very important, um, especially as you learn to combine them and then use them to do stuff uh, like create conditions for if statements and a bunch of magical stuff that we're going to be learning about very, very soon. So... Um, now let's jump back into here and let's see what else we can do with these. So to add another layer of complexity, well, first of all, we already know how to do Booleans in general, so true and false. And then now we also know how to do Boolean logical operators, but and that makes it even more complex. But now what if we start doing operations upon those operations? So having multiple operations into one expression that evaluates to a single Boolean. Let me show you what I mean. So. I'm going to challenge you, okay? I'm going to give you a Boolean expression, a logical expression, so using logical operators. And then I want you to try guessing using what I taught you today to tell me what is going to be printed out, okay, when we run this program. So, okie dokie, here's your Boolean expression here. Um, as you can see, it looks a little confusing, but if you just look very closely, you can see that I have parentheses here. So just like in regular math, we have um, order of operations when we use parentheses. The same thing applies when we do arithmetic or Boolean arithmetic with Booleans and stuff like that. So just do it um, one group at a time and then evaluate it to see what you think it's going to be printed out as. So try it out and see what you get. All right, let's do it ourselves now. So, uh, so let's just do one by one, like I said. So first we have not potato at the highest level. So we're going to replace this. Well, first of all, what is potato? We know that potato has the value of true, so not potato will be false. So we can just take this and replace it with false. All right, now we have false and false. And so for and, both of them have to be true, so this will be false. So let's go ahead and replace the whole thing with false. All right, and then now we have another group here, so true or false. In this case for true, both of them have to be, or excuse me, only one of them has to be true for the whole thing to be true. So we're going to do true. Okay, and then finally we have false, exclusive or, and then true. And we know that for exclusive or, one of them has to be true, specifically one of them has to be true, exactly one of them has to be true for the entire thing to be true. So it'll be true, okay? All right, so that'll be true. So now let's just undo all of that to verify if I'm right or not. So run this, and there we go, we get true, awesome. Hopefully you got it, but if you didn't, it's okay. You can just, uh, after this video, just go ahead and play around with these things. You can, you know, make a new project or a new Python script file, and then just play around with these Boolean expressions to uh, start understanding it better if you need to do some extra practice. Uh, that's something I did for sure when I was first learning this. Okay, so one more thing I'm gonna teach you about before I leave you guys to um, divulge or digest that information rather, is uh, Boolean math. So I already taught you about Boolean logical expressions and that's technically called I've seen that called Boolean arithmetic, but I want to teach you specifically about adding Booleans within Python. That's actually something you can do, which is sort of unique to Python uh, as, far as, my, as far as I'm aware compared to other languages like Java. So potato is equal to true in this case, right? And so another way of representing Booleans, like true and false, true is equal to one, and then false is equal to zero. And that's actually a common theme you'll see in computer science in general, something very interesting. Uh, so yeah, so true usually equals one or on, and then false is equal to, to zero or off, all right? And so if you try doing something like uh, potato is equal to potato plus true, that's like, in Python, that's the same thing as doing one plus one, because potato currently has the value of true, which is one, and then plus another true, which is one, that'll equal two. So if you print this out, we should get two into the console here, or the output, whatever you want to call it. There we go, we get two which is really weird if you think about it, but but just understand that Python behind the scenes will be converting these Booleans into numbers, and then it's just adding those numbers and then setting the value potato to those numbers. So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, right? So let's see what else we can do. Let's try doing a fraction, two thirds, all right? See if you can do it yourself before I do it. So print, so two thirds. So now let's do two for the numerator. So true plus true, 
divided by true plus true plus true. Let's see what that gives us, and we get 0 0.66. Awesome. So that is two thirds as a uh, decimal number. And uh, if we wanted to add any falses in here, that wouldn't change anything because again, false is zero. So it's really ignored in that case. And yeah, that's that. And then you also have something like called the bool function. So bool. And so bool is a built-in function in Java, or excuse me, Python. This is a Python tutorial. You give it something and then it gives you a true or false. All right, so let's say that we have one. We know that one behind the scenes is a true Boolean. So we're just gonna print that out. So print bool, pass in one, and we should get a true. We do, there we go. So let's do zero and we'll get false. And something interesting is if you do a number higher than one, what do you think is gonna happen? Try and guess, all right? So if you guess true, you are correct. So any number one and above will be true and then zero will always be false and for Booleans, okay? That's just something interesting that you have to remember. It's not really gonna come up really ever, uh, at least not often, but it's something interesting. But anyway, hopefully you found this tutorial interesting. We learned about Booleans today, otherwise known as bools. And uh, that is just uh, two options, true or false, or one and zero. And so you can do different things like printing out Booleans, you know, setting them to a variable to store it, um, you know, Boolean logical expressions by using the logical operators such as and, or, exclusive or, and not. And then finally, I showed you how you can add Booleans together to do some interesting stuff. And then also has how to use the bool function. So hopefully you found all that very interesting and you learned a lot for this episode. Uh, stay tuned for next episode where we're going to learn about the comparison operators, which are essentially, you know, kind of basic math operators, except that they give you a Boolean and uh, we can do stuff with that. It's going to be especially useful for uh, conditions and stuff like that. So anyway, a lot of fun stuff here. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I said that three times now. And uh, yeah, see you later, guys. And peace. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just wanna review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I wanna tell you is that if you wanna support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.